Hello. This video, as you can see, is an overview of psychology with a brief history and perspective approach. First, we will speak about psychology's early history, and then we will do an overview of the more contemporary perspectives. Psychology's origins are unclear. It is thought that the philosophical origins of psychology started with philosophy and physiology. The ancient Egyptians recognized that head trauma caused changes in behavior. One example of a discovery is Luigi Galvani. In 1791, he discovered that electric charges applied to nerves or muscles could cause the limbs of frogs to twitch even after the frogs were dissected. Galvani proposed that animal electricity was the basis of movement and even life itself. The first significant signpost happened in 1860 when Gustav Fechner published his book, The Elements of Psychophysics. It was in this book that he described the methods and techniques which the first psychologists used for their first experiments. Psychophysics developed until the birth of psychology as a separate discipline in 1879. In that year, Wilhelm Wundt created the first laboratory of psychology at the University of Leipzig. Wundt founded a school of thought referred to as structuralism, which thought, sought to break down the mind's conscious experience into its most basic elemental structural components. He thought that in order to understand how the mind assembled these parts, we had to first engage ourselves in subjective introspection. In opposition to structuralism, William James created a school of thought called functionalism. This proposed that the study of what the mind does rather than conscious experience and its structure was more relevant than structuralism. John Watson in the United States published Behaviorism in 1913. While this was greatly opposed to structuralism, he was strongly influenced by functionalism. His approach was rather than to dispute how the conscious mind should be studied, he argued that we should only study what overt behavior we can see. Behaviorism eventually became the dominant psychological theoretical framework and continued to be so for 60 years. It emphasized that stimulus and response could be linked through rewards in complex chains <clears throat> through what may be termed habituation or habit formation. In 1912, Max Wertheimer founded the Gestalt School, also in part to oppose structuralism and its emphasis on studying consciousness and the mind by trying to break it down. He argued that the mind often didn't build our sensory experiences from simple components, so it makes no sense to try and break our complex sensory experiences into simpler components. Our mind will often impose structure where there may be none. And sometimes, as in the case of inkblot tests, we'll see things and events as a whole, rather than a collection of simple elements that we make an effort to connect. In 1900, Sigmund Freud published the, published the Interpretation of Dreams, which argued for the value of the study of the role of the unconscious mind particularly in the treatment of mental disorders. We will now briefly discuss contemporary perspectives in psychology. These are more commonly accepted perspectives. The behavioral perspective was proposed by B.F. Skinner. 
He revitalized behaviorism with his investigations into what he termed operant conditioning. While similar in some respects to the habit-like learning of other behaviorists, in operant condition, the animal's own responses have consequences, which are either in reinforced or not reinforced <clears throat> rather than by stimuli that signaled reward or punishment. If it's positive reinforcement, you will actually give the animal or the human something positive, like a treat. In negative reinforcement, you will hold back that treat because what, you, what the animal or person did is not what you wanted. Skinner also developed automated chambers for animal testing, which not only saved labor, but also time and allowed for greater ease of experimentation as well as control and consistency over stimuli and procedures. Psychodynamic emphasized the struggle between conscious and the unconscious. Based on his theory of psychiatric disorders on unconscious conflicts between self-gratification and morals, but his views were grudgingly accepted only <clears throat> at the time because they did not offer sufficient explanatory or predictive insight into the structure and the nature of the human mind. Freud was deeply influenced by his medical training and it made treatment of understanding of mental disorders his primary interest, not basic research on the structure or function of the mind. Humanistic is the third force <coughs> of the contemporary perspectives. It discusses free will and conscious choice. These ideas began to coalesce into a movement in the 1950s with the public acceptance of the more popular writings of Carl Rogers, Abraham Maslow, and Rollo May, as well as in the philosophical and psychiatric interest in European existentialism. It was crystallized in 1962 by two events, the publication of Abraham Maslow's Toward a Psychology of Being, in which humanistic psychology was defined as the third force, in contrast to behaviorism and psychoanalysis, and by the first of a series of conferences sponsored by Sonoma State College that led to the creation of the American Association for Humanistic Psychology. During the 1960s and 70s, humanistic psychology became a major force shaping the middle-class culture in the United States, a development also known as the Human Potential Movement. The physiological psychologist wants to study the relationships between our biology and our behavior. As previously explored, Galvini found that electrical stimulation of a frog's nerve caused contraction of the muscle to which it was attached. Contraction occurred even when the nerve and muscle were detached from the rest of the body. So the ability of the muscle to contract and the ability of the nerve to send a message to the muscle were characteristics of these tissues themselves. Thus, the brain did not inflate muscles by directing pressurized fluid through the nerve. This was a very profound discovery in 1791. Johannes Müller was a forceful advocate of the application of experimental techniques of physiology. In his Doctrine of Specific Nerve Energies, Müller observed <clears throat> that although all nerves carry the same basic message and electrical impulse, we perceive the messages of different nerves in different ways. For example, if we stimulate an optical nerve, <clears throat> we would stimulate vision. The cognitive psychologist explores the process of acquiring knowledge. Norbert Wiener recognized the importance of feedback in the learning process. And we as adult learners also 
want to get feedback from our teachers so that we can know if we are, quote unquote, doing it right. Jean Piaget used naturalistic observations and is considered the father of cognitive psychology. Donald O. Hebb created the concept in learning of neuroconnectionism. In other words, through this process of neuroconnectionism, learning continues in the individual even when he or she leaves the learning environment, the classroom, and even online. We do continue to think about the material that we have been introduced to. Sociocultural. <clears throat> this emphasizes the role of culture and social milieu as it affects the individual. Floyd Alport is considered a founder of experimental social psychology, in part for his theoretical rigor and emphasis on measurement and in part for his popular 1924 textbook, Social Psychology, which went through 13 editions over 50 years. Gordon Alport, the younger brother of Floyd, he conducted pioneering research on attitudes, prejudice, religion, and rumor transmission, among other topics. In addition, he trained prominent psychologists such as Stanley Milgram, Thomas Pettigrew, Jerome Bruner, and Anthony Greenwall. He also helped establish the field of personality psychology. Kenneth and his wife, Mamie, Mamie also a significant research scientist, they conducted research that suggested that black children preferred to play with white dolls a result that the U.S. Supreme Court later cited as evidence that segregation generates a feeling of inferiority that may affect the children's hearts and minds. He was also the first American, African American to be elected president of the American Psychological Association. Finally, Norman Triplett published one of the first experiments related to social psychology. The report appearing in the American Journal of Psychology in 1898 compared how fast children wound a reel when alone and in competition with another child. He concluded that the presence of another contestant serves to liberate latent energy not ordinarily available. This concludes this first Unit 1 psychology video please move on to the next video in this series.